Greetings from Singapore and uh, welcome to the Smart and Sustainable City Innovative Startup Panel. And uh, this is presented by City Developments Limited or CDL in partnership you know, with World City Summit 2021. And today we are in a state of climate emergency. Global carbon emissions have not decreased since the Paris Agreement. Even last year, when the world almost came to a halt, only 7% reduction was recorded. Cities have very high carbon footprint, occupying only 2% of the world's landmass. We are responsible for 70% of global CO2 emissions. And uh, building and construction are responsible for almost 40% of total direct and indirect CO2 emission. And definitely, that also allowed us to make a difference, you know, through building better, greener, and in a more sustainable manner. And uh, let me quote uh, the CEO of 100 Resilient City, and, uh, supported by the Rockefeller Foundation. He said that cities are actually our greatest opportunity, and that offer us innovations, solutions, and also. Uh, businesses. And that is exactly why we present this panel and presenting seven wonderful innovators who are going to help us design, build, and manage buildings in a more sustainable manner. And without further ado, these are our seven innovators, and they are going to present solutions covering from green building and as to waste management, circularity, and even renewable energy tracking and turning waste into resources. Uh, without further ado, let me bring up the, uh, the first speaker, Jeremy Lee, who is actually the founder and CEO of Simply Good, turning waste into very practical cleaning solutions. Jeremy, over to you. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeremy. I'm the founder and CEO of Simply Good. Simply Good is essentially a sustainable home care brand. We dehydrate cleaning tablets and we ref in, into a refill format to reduce single-use plastic bottles and packaging. Before I get into, into it, just a quick introduction about myself. Uh, I am actually a serial sustainable entrepreneur. I'm 29 this year. Uh, I started my first sustainable business at the age of 25, uh, Ugly Good, which focuses on transforming food waste into valuable products. 
uh, back in the day, uh, we took orange pills and we converted them into natural cleaning solutions. Uh, I have since uh, grown the business significantly and exited the business, and this is my second su successful spin-off, Simply Good. So um, how did we actually uh, come out with Simply Good when we were creating natural cleaning agents early on in the day? Uh, as we took a lot of orange pills and we started to valorize them and create valuable products, uh, we started to sell more and more natural cleaning solutions. Uh, but later did we know that we were actually also generating more and more plastic waste. And that, that gave us the entire idea that could we do something better instead of um, just generating more plastic waste? Could we look at our formulations to re-engineer a greener supply chain? And that's how Simply Good was born. So Simply Good essentially aims to solve the issue of the plastic waste problem. Every year, we dump 14 billion pounds of this into our oceans, breaking into tiny pieces, showing back up into our food and water supply. And every country, big and small, are actually all guilty of this. Even for Singapore, a really small country, we generate about 467 million plastic bottles a year. And I thought to myself, you know, being in the cleaning industry, how clean is actually the cleaning industry? Ironically, we're not really that clean. We generate about 190 million tons of single-use plastic disposed bottles every year. And that's, that's the amount of product and plastic waste we're generating as an industry as a whole. It's a growing industry. What's being done? Um, looking at it currently, I feel that currently not much is being done and a lot more could be looked into. That's why we created Simply Good. So when we studied what essentially goes into a traditional cleaning agent, uh, to a surprise, over 30 years, nothing has changed. The industry is still as wasteful and as resource inefficient. What do I mean? Just take a look at the cleaning bottle you have at home. Uh, be before you purchase a cleaning bottle, what are you actually paying for? You're actually paying for a single-use plastic bottle that you toss out when you're done. And within the bottle, it contains cleaning solutions that are 96% water. Essentially, you're paying for a plastic bottle and mainly water. And of course, not forgetting mainly consists of the transportation cost of transporting a bulky and heavy material right to your doorstep. It is highly inefficient and carbon inefficient to do so while all you actually ever needed was just 4% of the active cleaning ingredients. You have the existing bottle that you already bought once, why not reuse it? You have ready access to water at home, why not use that? So we can totally, together, stop shipping water that you have at home. With Simply Good, we're actually trying to reinvent the way you clean your home for the better. So let me introduce you Simply Good, the cleaning tablets. So with me, in my hand, I have the, actually the Simply Good cleaning tablet, which only contains 4% of the active ingredients you ever need. I have it in my pocket the entire time. I was carrying actually a 500ml bottle worth of cleaning solution. And we call this the cleanest cleaner. So we are, with this, we are able to, to eliminate all single-use plastic as it encourages consumers to reuse their single-use bottles over and over again. And because we got rid of the liquid formulation, we are also able to create in a more green and sustainable packaging as it uses 90% less plastic to contain the cleaning formulation. So with this, we're actually cleaning up our supply chain uh, for the better. Not only that, these tablets are also safe and non-toxic. Uh, they are actually good for, they are made of plant-based ingredients, good for your family and children. And more importantly, it focuses on reducing the carbon footprint. A small tablet like that is actually essentially 300 times lighter and 200 times smaller than a traditional cleaning liquid agent. And that's how we were able to transport more efficiently and cut down on our carbon footprint. So we've tested this on a pilot level just last year in Singapore uh, with our direct online consumer store. And we've sold over 150,000 in revenue of eco-friendly products. Uh, not only just that, they were going to mainly consumers. We've, we've sold over 15,000 over tablets uh, to direct to consumers and also to corporate clients ranging from government institutions to banks, to hotels, even to multinational corporates. This really signaled, signaled to us that you know, there is an opportunity and the market is receptive and ready now for a sustainable solution. So being an environmental organization, what's really important to us is our social environmental impact. And we are nicely aligned to UN SDG Goal 12 of encouraging responsible consumption and production, and also UN SDG Goal 13 of climate action. Just in our small little pilot last year, we've, we've reduced 15 over 1,000 bottles going to the landfills with every simply good refuse hatchet. 
uh, not only just that, we saw a huge uptake in consumers being able to partake in a more innovative and sustainable solution. And that was really encouraging because we saw that's what we wanted ever to do, is just engage consumers and on a much easier level. And uh, not only just in terms of engagement, because we were able to reformulate and rethink our entire formulation with sustainability in mind first. That was the most important thing when we designed the product. We were able to use 90% less plastic. We were able to cut down our, on our carbon footprint significantly. Not only just this as a social enterprise, we don't only look at environmental impacts. We also have a secondary KPI of social human impact. As the business grew last year, we were able to employ beneficiaries by working with local beneficiary organizations like CPAS, CPAS to provide employment opportunities to the marginalized individuals in Singapore. So this actually is also nicely tied in with UNS SDG Goal 8 of providing a fair, decent work and economic growth opportunities for all. So today, I'm actually here to ask for some help. We are open to collaboration opportunities for any interested organizations, be it from you know, a corporate, you know, a small business, you know, from a government institution, or even a learning institute. If you're interested in a concept like this, please contact me. Second, we are also looking for distribution and channel partners, hoping to reach out to a much wider audience network, because we believe that we are ready to scale. And last but not least, we are open to grants and early stage funding. So, Please join me to create a clean home and cleaner planet. Simply drop me an email at jeremy at simplygood.sg and visit our website. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jeremy Lee. You know, the a cleaning agent that can serve both environmental and social group. And in order to green our built environment, sustainable building material is very important. And that helps us to reduce and body carbon. And the next speaker, who is actually Dr. Wong Suk Fan from Timasic Poly, and together with her partner, she has come up with a very wonderful solution called the Sea Sand. And uh, now let's listen to Dr. Wong. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Wong Suk Fan. I'm a senior lecturer at the School of Applied Science and head of the Centre for Urban Sustainability at Temasek Polytechnic, Singapore. A big thank you to City Developments Limited for this opportunity to speak on closing the mixed plastic waste loop, focusing on sea sand, sustainable building materials of tomorrow. The sea in sea sand is chosen to represent circularity and carbon reduction. This is an innovative idea that Tamasic Polytechnic and City Developments Limited are now working together under a collaborative project with our project advisor coming from Nanyang Technological University, NTU Singapore. So why are we doing this project? There are several issues that constitute the main driving force behind this project. Firstly, the sustainability issue. The world is concerned about the high volume of heavily contaminated and mixed or non-homogeneous plastic waste. And this is unsustainable due to the high cost of cleaning and sorting plastic waste before they can be recycled. Incinerating or burning this plastic waste is highly carbon intensive. And here in Singapore, landfilling is not an option because it is anticipated that Samakau Landfill, being the one and only landfill in Singapore now, will be reaching its capacity by the year 2035. Secondly, the uncertainty issue. The government is also concerned about the uncertainty in the supply chain of raw materials, in particular, heavy reliance on the importation of natural sand being one of the main ingredients in building materials. 
And thirdly, which is finally also, the acceptability issue. And here we are referring to acceptability of new things. Well, many questions will come to our minds as end users, right? For example, what happens if we adopt a new material with mixed plastic waste in it? Bear in mind that currently, mixed plastic waste are not acceptable as a raw feedstock for building materials. And we ask ourselves, what if the technical properties of these new materials are being compromised in this case? So how are we approaching this now? Our concept on CSAN involves innovative, proprietary processes, technologies and capabilities to convert as received mixed plastic waste that are ever-changing in their properties into standardised feedstock to be made into intermediate products. For example, mixed plastic reinforcement fibres as well as mixed plastic lightweight aggregates which will then be put into final products such as lightweight concrete wall panels for non-structural applications and eventually into load-bearing members for structural applications. And all these feedstocks, intermediate products and final products mentioned here, we need to ensure that they are all in full compliance with both local and international standard specifications and guidelines. Our research team is currently working towards a sustainable solution to close this mixed plastic waste loop that is cost-effective with increased productivity, safe for use with this disruptive technology, easy to be implemented, and able to be scaled up for commercial purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, all our team members are extremely excited to embark on this mixed plastic technology journey. And we hope you are excited too. Our proof of concept has been endorsed by our project advisor from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, and also by professors and experts from various renowned universities and uh, research institutions, both locally here in Singapore as well as overseas. To find out more, we invite you to contact us at the following numbers and email addresses. Thank you, and we hope to have a great future and to embark on this exciting journey together with you. Well, thank you, Dr. Wong. What a wonderful, sustainable building material, and we are really proud to be part of it. And uh, do you know that study shows that in our ocean, there will be more plastic waste than fish by 2050 in business as usual scenario. And that is exactly what has driven the next innovator to start the Seven Clean Sea. And uh, without further ado, let me bring, introduce you to the founder, Tom Peacock Nasal, and who is, has been doing wonderful work to tackle plastic waste reduction. And, uh, and, and he has many, many interesting initiatives in the pipeline. Over to you now, Tom. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tom peacock Nazil, and I'm the founder of Seven Clean Seas. Now, we are an ocean cleanup organization. We're a certified social enterprise here in Singapore and also in the UK as well. And we've recently been awarded a couple of very good prizes that, that have really 
kind of galvanized the work we've been doing over the years. The first is the BritCham Sustainability Champion of the Year Award for last year here in Singapore. And the second was the United Nations World Tourism Organization Global Startup Championship, specifically looking at SDG 14, Life Below Water. Now, in terms of why we exist, there are no shortage of people like myself in this world. People who want to make a difference and start building projects. But it doesn't matter whether you're trying to clean the oceans or decarbonize the atmosphere, there is and always will be an issue when it comes to funding. So we need to start there. We need to develop an innovative funding mechanism, one which will generate capital, which we can then deploy across numerous different projects from nearshore cleanup projects, river cleanup infrastructure, literally, sorry, literally waste management infrastructure in rural and island locations, and of course, as we go, empowerment of communities at the same time. Now, the issue we are tackling is ocean plastic pollution. It's said that 11 million metric tons of plastic enter the ocean every single year, and under business as usual, by 2040, less than 20 years away, this is gonna almost double to 29 million metric tons. This is gonna almost triple to 29 million metric tons. And that's 50 kilograms of plastic for each meter of coastline globally. Now, ocean plastic is terrible, but it's very much a symptom of a broken system. A system that sees two billion people in this world who don't have access to waste management. A system that sees waste collectors, informal workers earning between one and eight dollars a day, depending on where they are, how old they are, and what gender they are. And these are the areas that we want to tackle. So far, we've been able to recover over 142,000 kilos of plastic directly from the marine environment. But this is an insignificant quantity if we're staring down the barrel of 11 million metric tons of plastic every single year. So we need to scale up. And to that end, we developed our goals for 2025. Our goals are to recover 10 million kilos of ocean plastic across the seven worst plastic polluting countries, all whilst employing and formalizing 200 informal waste collectors. We've already got a project successfully going in Indonesia and two separate projects coming up in Vietnam and Thailand. In terms of the projects and the work that we're doing, it's really about thinking big. We realize that the vast majority of plastic enters through river systems, so we need to develop technology that can stop it before it ever reaches there. Thanks to Marina Bay Sands and Howden Group Holdings, we've now got the funding in place to physically build and install our first river cleanup system by the end of the year in either Bangkok or South Vietnam. The second project is very different. It's looking at communities around ocean cleanup projects in marine protected areas. But as this has been a huge success, we still need to scale it up. And to that end, Microsoft have come on board with a large grant to allow us to build the uh, Rio Archipelago, where the project is situated, the first waste management for plastic pollution. We're going to be able to aggregate plastic from households, coastal communities, and the natural environment for the first time and feed that back into a circular economy. Now, thanks to the strategic partners that we've got on board who have really made this all possible, and I never thought I'd get to say we have a, a list of UN accolades that we've collected over this time, but really it comes down to the innovation of how we work with the outside world whether that's action, education, or donation. And on the action side is what I'm gonna focus on, is really looking at waste auditing and plastic reduction strategies for our corporate partners, and then generating the data we need around plastic consumption to look at offsetting that plastic against plastic in the environment. Plastic offsetting allows companies to offset their necessary plastic footprint by investing in projects that tackle ocean plastic pollution in some of the world's most affected regions. Really, 1,000 kilos of ocean plastic that we have recovered is representative of a plastic credit that's generated on one of our projects. The plastic material itself gets recycled back into the circular economy wherever possible, and we issue a certificate of offset in response. And really, there are a vast amount of applications. It's not just products, packaging, and supply chain, but operations, events, can be a service or a award. And I'm here to talk about one of the most exciting applications we've had to date. It is an absolute world first. We've never announced this. And I'd like to say a huge thank you to City Developments Limited for making this happen. Together, we have generated the world's first plastic neutral building in the entire world. 
This has taken a process of measurement, waste audits, and looking at a building that already has fantastic green credentials here in Singapore. Now that we've generated the data re required about plastic usage in this facility, we're going to be able to go and actually remove that same quantity of plastic from the marine environment in the marine area of South, the South China Sea. It's going to have a direct impact on the livelihoods of many, many people. The process is fairly simple as well. We have to measure, and that has already happened through quite literally getting our hands dirty and crawling through the trash to understand what plastic is being generated. What are the diversion rates and how can we reduce that plastic? From this report that's gonna be delivered later this week, we are actually able to make recommendations for reduction wherever possible because we want this opportunity to help Tampanese Concourse reduce plastic waste to an absolute bare minimum. And then the really exciting bit, we get to, through the purchase of plastic credits, of course, invest in projects in Indonesia and Thailand that are proactively cleaning the marine environment and helping the local communities in order to make Tampanese Concourse the world's first building that will be plastic neutral. It's a world first. It's a genuinely amazing that we've been able to achieve this. Thank you so much. And if you would like to learn more about plastic offsetting and how it could work in any of the applications that we've already discussed, the United Nations Environmental Program recently released a case study on seven clean seas as best practice. I highly recommend you head over to C, uh, C Sustainable, sorry, C Circular, C Circular's website to see the uh, document, download it, and uh, please contact us if you do have any questions. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Tom. How exciting. We certainly uh, look forward to working with you to establish this very first plastic neutral building in Singapore. Well, being a landlord for many, many years now, and uh, CDL is well aware of the importance of maintaining and managing buildings to achieve uh, optimal performance. And uh, definitely the next solution will help us achieve that. Waste Scan was actually developed by um, you know, Dr. Kush uh, Agarwal to help building owners like us to manage our building in a more effective efficient manner for a more sustainable built environment. Over to you now, Kush. Hello, everyone. The built environment is all around us, and we are living as part of this ecosystem, living in houses, living, working in offices, as well as traveling through public infrastructure in terms of roads, bridges, and tunnels. The built environment in its form in the carbon embodied in infrastructure as well as the operations takes majority of the CO2 emissions that are currently emitting in the environment. And today, the built environment inspection and maintenance is a reactive process. This means that the inspections are done when the buildings are damaged or something goes wrong. And this is also leading to large carbon emissions. Major infrastructure buildings all over the world are on the verge of collapsing. And this, in some cases, also leads to accident due to infrastructure failure. And Based on our ongoing engagements with infrastructure stakeholders, we have learned some major inefficiencies in the current practices. Today's inspections are primarily done manually, which are labor intensive, time consuming and tedious, and sometimes unsafe when these inspections are conducted in confined spaces or high rise buildings using gondolas. So the data capturing part becomes intense as well as time consuming. The data analysis part uses a skilled workforce like professional engineers, which makes the entire process costly and prohibitive for mass adoption. This collectively leads to systematic lack of data-driven maintenance. 
at Wavescan, we are focusing on the core of technology as a combination of advancements in sensors, software, and AI to move this practice towards predictive maintenance using non-destructive testing technology. And through our decade-long research at ASTAR and Wavescan, we have developed a first of its kind see-through sensor technology that is completely contactless, high resolution, and safe to use in a civilian environment. And it enables the user to see through the built environment structures for embedded defects such as cracks, corrosions, pittings, delaminations, amongst others. And as a combination of our hardware and software technology, we are providing an end-to-end -end 3D imaging solution that enables the user to localize for objects, for defects embedded inside the structures, conduct full scans to identify these defects, quantify them in millimeter or centimeter scale, and then generate reports in line with the built environment standards or overlay this data on digital twin models. And we have integrated our scanner systems into modular form factors that integrate into robotic platforms such as drones, UGVs. This enables us to automate the entire defect capturing process without risking the lives of field inspection engineers by operating at risky environments such as high-rise buildings or gondolas. Our core focus so far has been on three primary use cases. The first being structural inspections in terms of condition monitoring of metal rebars, as well as brackets, voids inside concrete structures, facade delaminations, as well as identification of moisture and water for leakage. And through over the course of last two years, through various paid pilot projects, awards, as well as government grants, we have established and demonstrated this technology for these use cases with stakeholders in Singapore, Europe, Japan, and Thailand. And now, as we are in the final stages of commercial product launch, we are also aiming to start full-scale operationalization of this technology in Singapore, which will enable us to develop and advance our AI algorithms to automate the defect analysis process, thus helping us in terms of moving from a reactive process to a data-driven proactive and eventually predictive maintenance processes. And this will maximize the asset life cycle in terms of building a proactively data-driven ecosystem that is more livable, sustainable, as well as a resilient infrastructure that is safer to live. And as we are growing this company, we are constantly looking for strategic investors, early adopters of this technology, and partners towards a win-win relationship of making our built environment safer together. Please reach out to me or over my LinkedIn or email, and let's talk. Thank you. Well, in order to green our built environment, renewable energy play a very, very important role. But how do we ensure that the solar panels are working very well, you know, 24-7, and we need technology and solution to track the performance? That is exactly the solutions that our next speaker is going to share. Uh, Dr. Ko Yong Shane is uh, from the QE Labs are going to share his technology and solutions, how to ensure our renewable energy, the solar panels are working well. Over to you, Yangxing. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Yongsheng, COO and co-founder of Quantified Energy Labs. Thank you, Esther, for the introduction and the opportunity to share our digital area solutions for solar photovoltaic PV asset management. Quantified Energy Labs is a deep tech spin-off from Solar Energy Research Institute of Singapore at NUS. Uh, this picture shows two of the co-founders. We were the PV uh, doctors at 
series. Uh, we had a close collaboration with CDL and is thankful for the opportunity and the great support from CDL on our spin-off company. Uh, renewable energy are uh, uh, renewable energy are greatly adopted uh, throughout uh, the world. In Singapore, uh, we also have a very aggressive target of uh, PV installations of 1.5 gigawatt by 2025. To reach that goal, in 2025, more than one gigawatt of solar needs to be deployed, uh, which is about two times faster than what we are doing it now. There are challenges of uh, Installing PV in Singapore. Uh, number one is uh, we are a city state with limited land space, hence, the, we have to uh, efficiently use the available space of a building and rooftop to maximize the PV deployment. In Singapore, we have a tropical climate where, from our research, we have seen that PV systems deployed in Singapore has a very high degradation, hence, there need to be a new improved operation and maintenance to uh, quickly identify and replace the defective solar panels. Digitization is getting widely adopted in various industries, uh, including energy sector. Uh, big amount of data are gathered, and there is a need for intelligence uh, management of such big data. At QE Labs, uh, to solve the challenges, uh, we provide end-to-end -end, uh, drone aerial digital PV solutions where we use a drone coupled with a different type of payloads, uh, LiDAR, oblique camera, thermal imaging camera, and electroluminescent camera at various stages of a PV life cycle from design, build, commissioning to operate. Uh, we will uh, process the data uh, and integrate them into a digital uh, life cycle management platform where various stakeholders uh, can have a clear view of the health of the PV system. Uh, PV system design is the first phase of a PV life cycle. A properly designed PV system is important to ensure the lifelong operation of the system. Uh, conventional ways of PV system design uh, involve uh, very manual work where Humans have to go to the actual sites to do measurements, which is tedious and slow. And given the COVID-19 situations where a lot of restrictions are, uh, we have on the actual sites, hence it is getting more challenging for doing the on-site measurements and PV system design. To tackle the problem uh, at QE Labs, we provide uh, drone 3D system design where we have a drone 3D model integrated with our detailed physics-based simulations to provide a very accurate uh, PV system design. In addition, we use parametric modeling techniques and automated workflow to ensure that we can have a very fast PV system designs to cover a very large area and multiple sites. After PV system design, construction monitoring phase start. Uh, conventional con construction monitoring uh, Conventional construction monitoring uh, involves uh, having supervisor on site to constantly monitor the construction process. With the scale of a PV construction getting larger and larger, it becomes more challenging to do construction monitoring, and most often times uh, it is neglected. At QE Labs, we provide drone construction monitoring where we do routine high resolution uh, visual 2D mapping of the construction sites as a monitoring process and also to serve as a logistic and resource planning. Uh, we have, uh, our platform is air powered so that we can automatically uh, do verifications of the S-built versus S-design. Uh, this picture on the right here shows example of a PV construction sites where our platform uh, is able to estimate the construction progress. Uh, the next uh, product we have is a drone inspection where we integrate visible thermal and electroluminescence imaging uh, for inspection. On the left here, you can see a thermal imaging where we detect the heat signature. In the middle is a electroluminescence imaging where we detect the internal defects uh, of the solar panels. And on the right is the visible imaging where we can see the defects such as soiling. And incorporating the three extensive uh, v, uh, imaging technologies with uh, AI, we are able to accurately uh, detect the defective panels 
in the PV systems uh, and replace them timely. The project we are working on currently is a floating PV project. This is a 60 megawatt large scale PV project in Singapore where we will be using our drone to do a visible thermal and electroluminescence of all the 120,000 solar panels on the uh, floating reservoir. Uh, this is to ensure to minimize the risk related to PV deployment on floating uh, reservoir. The project two that we're working on is a solar nova project where PV systems are installed over multiple sites of hundreds and thousands of sites. So we were engaged to provide automated PV system designs to reduce the manual labor work and in return re reduce the general cost associated with uh, PV system design and installation. Our solution is not only applicable for Singapore, uh, it is also applicable for cities worldwide. We estimated that 300 gigawatt of solar deployments uh, is needed in the urban cities to ensure the, to meet the energy demand of the cities and ensure sustainable development. And by 2050, uh, this market will double with the double in city population. Uh, solar electricity is the cheapest source of electricity today with tremendous growth potential. Uh, let's all fly closer to the sun uh, in search of a sustainable future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ku Yong Sheng. And the next speaker is a young startup who just actually won the most innovative solution award uh, last week at the SDG Open Hack Singapore 2021. So we need young people like, you know, Kevin, Shami Kevin, who is actually one of the partner of this called the Smart Panel Solution. And just hear what they have to say. And uh, over to you now, Kevin. Thank you, Esther. I'm Kevin, and I'll be presenting on behalf of my team, Smart Panel. We are a group of university students from NUS and NTU who have known each other for the past seven years and are collaborating for the first time on a project. We are humbled and thankful to World City Summit, GGEF, and CDL for giving us the opportunity to showcase our idea on a global stage. Smart Panel was founded on the basis of limitation from current solar tracking systems. My team brainstormed on numerous ways to improve solar energy harvested from existing solar panels. It is imperative that we optimize solar panels as their hefty investment for anyone. In short, we plan to integrate smart processors to pre-existing solar panels. To commence, I will now showcase our hackathon pitch video to give you a short insight into our idea. Introducing Smart Panel, Power the Future. Our initiative to incorporate smart systems into existing solar panels. Solar energy in Singapore currently makes up 0.55% of the country's total electricity supply. There are two broad limitations as shown with static solar panels. Firstly, they are unable to capture maximum amount of solar irradiance due to varying movements of the sun and cloud cover. Secondly, existing solar trackers are active 24-7, contributing to unnecessary energy consumption and operational costs. Hence, combining adaptability with efficiency, we introduce Smart Panel. Our Smart Panels track the sun's movement under the most optimal conditions intermittently. By investing with us, our potential partners can seek to benefit from these advantages. Smart Panel relies on MQTT protocol. This works through data transfers from the sensors and weather sites to the solar panels, which are programmed to activate solar tracking under favorable weather conditions. Hence, the Smart Panels are advantageous in two aspects, an increase in efficiency by 40% and a lower maintenance cost. Here is a prototype of our Smart Panel.
the incorporation of smart panels into the largest floating solar farm would generate an additional 2.4 million kilowatt hours of energy per year, with an increase in efficiency of 8% per solar panel. Smart panel has a high scalability potential as the mechanism can simply be installed onto existing solar panels and incur a lower maintenance cost as it is not active 24-7. This brings your annual cost savings up to about half a million dollars. Additionally, smart panels would save CO2 emissions equivalent to the carbon sequestered by over 78,000 trees. Moreover, by 2030, Singapore's reliance on solar power would increase from 10 to 14%. Venturing into future plans, we have three major steps as shown below. And we hope you will join our journey in powering the future. I hope you enjoyed that despite our raw pitch video. We're a bit pressed for time given the 24 hours deadline. I would now like to dive into a few key points of our idea. Firstly, the value proposition. Comparing static solar panels with the 24 solar trackers in the market, we stand to gain a 40% increase in efficiency. Based on a local solar farm with over 13,000 solar panels, there will be a dramatic increase in energy output, savings, as well as a much lower carbon footprint. Now, just imagine the further improvements that we seek to enjoy from the intermittent tracking system Smart Panel is proposing. Furthermore, our idea is not limited to just Singapore, but can be expanded to all over the world, such as solar farms across the globe. This is a major step towards achieving sustainable and green cities. Secondly, the concept behind Smart Panel. We are tapping into MQTT protocol to deliver key data regarding light intensity values as well as weather status reports through web scraping and feed them directly to our Smart Panel. While considering energy consumption from solar tracking, our Smart Panel will determine if the current conditions will, be, will bring about any tangible gains in energy production. For instance, it will not be viable to activate solar tracking under high cloud cover or Stop solar tracking, you are just a passing cloud. Thirdly, our roadmap. We have identified three potential milestones to work towards, which I'll further elaborate on. Milestone one focuses on research and development with our partners. We first have to understand the condition our smart panel will be operating in before being able to program or install the system proper. Criteria like the cloud cover status or light intensity threshold have to be experimented with. Furthermore, a tower cost-benefit analysis between single and dual-axis solar panels has to be done. Additionally, the wind effect on the structural integrity of movable platforms has to be looked into, especially for rooftop installation. Milestone 2 taps into the R&D done to produce a proof-of-concept prototype that implements actual solar panels, the aforementioned programming, machine learning algorithm, and pattern recognition to further enhance efficiency down the road. The final milestone is pilot testing smart panel. We plan to explore various solar panel configuration to find the optimal one that maximizes energy production and minimizes costs. Smart panel's long-term performance will also have to be evaluated in the form of long-term cost analysis of an installation, maintenance, as well as any other associated costs. Eventually, we hope to progress into large-scale deployment of smart panel and we truly believe it has the potential to bring us closer to sustainable cities. And we hope to collaborate with you to make our initiative a reality. Together we can power the future. Thank you for your valuable time. Well, wow, wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. The next speaker is JJ Chuan, who is actually a fashion designer by training. And she has actually uh, innovated a very interesting music cloth from discarded cassette tape. And she is going places from Singapore to many major cities, turning ways into artwork, lifestyle product, fashion product. Uh, well, without further ado, JJ, the stage is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is JJ Chuan from Rehyphen. In Rehyphen, we specialize in collecting discarded cassette tapes from local community, and we weave them into pieces of cloth. We call it music cloth, as an effort to reduce and eliminate plastic waste while giving the product new life. 
Our music cloth was collected by Red Dot Design Museum Xiamen in China as their museum collection last year. Let's have a sneak peek on how we weave the cassette tapes. So according to World Bank, by 2050, global waste will increase by 70%, which is 3.4 billion tons. So what is the cost of music? So this data is released by MIT Press, show that 56 million kilograms of plastic were used to make physical cassette tapes since it first launched in 1963 until 1988. So we have not included CD and vinyl yet. So in Rehyphen, we have been constantly collecting cassette tapes throughout the year. And during the last year pandemic, because people are spending more time at home and cleaning up their storage, you can see a spike increase on our collections of cassette tapes in 2020. So we have been evolved throughout this year. We spent about nine months in our research and development process on how to weave music cloth before we officially launched our products in 2018. And this year, we have added a new feature called Scan and Listen into all our music cloth products. So we want to bring the music back, especially in this very tough time. So our bestseller is our Music Cloth City Map poster. We have created more than 100 different cities and ship it worldwide. So each Music Cloth City Map will receive a QR code where customer could scan and listen into our secret city playlist, which we specially created for each city. Besides, we also um, promote young and emerging uh, musicians where we include their music in our city playlist each month. So you can see a scan and listen logo in all our music core product listing online now. So beside our CD map collection, we also have music core products from fashion accessories like our bag collections to um, stationary products and lifestyle products. So these are the leftover empty tapes that we finish using uh, the tape inside but we don't throw it away. So we turn it into an upcycle greeting card. We call it tweet tape. So customer could actually customize their tweet in a tape and send it to their loved one. So when they send this tweet tape to someone they love, they're actually passing the sustainability message at the same time. So our customer profile is a mix. They are tech savvy. They care for environment. They are creative people. They live in more than one city in their lifetime. And most importantly, they love music. So for our distribution channel, uh, we launch our Music Cloth products online in different retail platforms. And besides, we also do wholesale distributions um, to cities like Frankfurt, Dubai, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. And occasionally, we do pop-up and exhibitions events in different cities. So last year, we were invited by Red Dot Design Museum Xiamen in China for this exhibition called 2020 Social Design Exhibition Asia where they curate 100 global social design from 20 different countries to showcase in China. We also have our first uh, virtual booth in Maison and Object Paris last year to showcase our product and also meet international buyer virtually. So in 2018 and 2019, Rehyphen were handpicked by Kevin McLeod as one of his top seven green heroes, which showcased in Grand Design. As well as we also selected as one of the modern method of how to build an object, which showcased in um, New York Times Square. So we do conduct workshop experience where customer could visit our studios and they can pick their favorite cassette tapes and we will teach them how to weave into either a city map poster or their self portraits. And during the event sections, we do provide zero waste food where we put all the ingredients in an ice cream cone so when customers finish the food, there will be no food waste left over on their hand. So we hosted different age groups from seven to 70 years old. And during the workshop session, we will provide a walkman experience. And kids love the walkman because it's a brand new toy for them. So a lot of people think that cassette tape is obsolete, but according to the data from this course, uh, the sales of cassette tape has actually increased by 33.3% last year compared to 2019. And the largest cassette tape factories, National Audio, 
claims that they mix 10 million cassette tape per year. So this data show that uh, cassette tapes and nostalgia trend are actually coming back. And why is it so? Because it can spark joy and also bring comfort to people in this uncertain time. So beside those underground who uh, release their music in a cassette tape form, superstars like Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, Kanye West, they also start to join this trend and release their new song in a cassette tape form, which makes this trend even more popular than before. Last, I would like to end my slide with this quote. Nothing old is ever reborn, but neither does it totally disappear. And that which was one born will reappear in a new form. You are invited to visit our social media, uh, re-hyphen, R-E-H-Y-P-H-E-N, for our latest update. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much for the seven impact innovator. Without them, it's very hard for us to move the needle towards a greener, cleaner, and more sustainable future. To build a smart and sustainable city, we need all hands on deck. We need to live, work, and play in a more sustainable manner. And as a builder, as a developer, as an asset owner, we all need to come together to design, build, and manage our properties and our buildings in a more sustainable manner. And uh, together, we can win this race to net zero. And thank you to all the audience for your support. And uh, thank you very much for all the impact innovator. We need them to continue to dream, to create, to innovate for a sustainable world that we want. Thank you very much.